Thank you for coming. Okay, today we have a workshop on the impact fee ordinance and Eric Landon, our director of growth management is going to present this and go. Chair. Chairman Board. You do actually want to do a roll call. Then. Roll call please okay. and go. <laughs> This is a public workshop of the Citrus County Board of County Commissioners this 6th day of June, 2023. In attendance are Chair Ruthie Schlebaugh, First Vice Chair Holly Davis, Second Vice Chair Rebecca Bays, Commissioners Jeff Kennard and Diana Finnegan, County Administrator Steve Howard, and County Attorney Denise A. Diamond Lynn. They're not in the room. Which are missing. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I lost the audience. I'm and sorry. And go. Uh, Let's see how, how fast you can okay, educate uh, us. Well, uh, Chairman, Board, thank you for having me. Uh, we, we, ha we're, we have an impact fee study here before you, and this came about as of some strategic planning that we did earlier this year. And I just want to credit our consultant who did our original impact fee study, Duncan and Associates, Clancy, uh, my staff, Gina, they, we turned this around really fast. Uh, this was kind of a, a three-week turnaround. And we did this so quickly because we we're anticipating the state legislature to change the rules on us, effective July 1. Uh, but that did not happen. So, so we, act, we acted quickly, uh, but, but uh, we didn't have to, which is okay. But we got it, we got it done. So uh, thank you to everyone that, that turned it around so fast. Um, if you want to amend your impact fees, uh, state statute requires two workshops, two public hearings. So concurrently, we're going to have workshops in the morning at, at this meeting, and then your next one, and then two public hearings at the at 501s uh, to have it so you can make a decision. Okay. Uh, our current impact fee schedule is collected at 50% for transportation, 50% uh, of what was recommended in, at the last update, which was, which was in 2021. If you want to increase your impact fees, the state legislature has a mechanism to do that, but it has to be phased in over time, and it's, it's, a, it's a slow phasing schedule. Um, you can only do a certain, it's like 12.5% a year, uh, unless, the one exception is, is if you can show extraordinary circumstances have happened in your community, then you can go ahead and raise it to 100%. So this study looked into if there were extraordinary circumstances in our community, and I'm going to refer, this is a, it's a short report. Oh, and if you want to make a change, it's a four-fifths vote. So four out of the five have to say yes. Um, so with that preamble in place, if you look at the study uh, from Duncan and Associates, they gave a couple of factors where they determined that there are extraordinary circumstances in our community. Uh, if you go to table one, which is in their report, uh, Table 1, Housing Units Permitted. Uh, they do three-year trends of, of permits, and you can see going back to 2010, we were, we were less than 300 single-family permits a year. Uh, that didn't change much until around 2017, where we were averaging over 1,000 permits a year for single-family. But if you can see since 2020, since the pandemic, the last two years, we jumped 70%. We're almost... Uh, we're over 1,700 single family a year. That puts an incredible amount of strain on our infrastructure. And as uh, the, the board has said many times before, for every dollar we collect, we're, we're spending more than a dollar to keep our infrastructure up. And that leads us to uh, table two, planned roadway capacity. You can see there is a significant shortfall on funding uh, for expanding our, our road capacity. Um, so those two factors according to our consultant, display the extraordinary need. And then finally, if you go to table four, you look at the revenue loss if you do not increase the impact fees. This is based on the, the current projections that we have, and you, don't, you can only go so far out and you never know what direction the economy is going. But just based on the data that we have, they estimated $3 million a year of revenue that we're losing, which would be $18 million over the next six years. Uh, if we keep our current impact fee versus doing the 100%. So um, since this is a workshop, I'd be happy to take any questions, comments, concerns. We can go back to the consultant and, and then uh, we can reconvene the discussion uh, at, the second, at the second required workshop, which will be on the 20th. Board? Yes, Chair. Any questions? No. 
Um, Eric, th we're looking at um, this for transportation, um, and I don't see all our. Is there a slide here for uh, impact fees? Is it only? Oh, this only applies to transportation. Schools are at fifty percent. Um, parks, library, fire, all that. It only applies to transportation. This is for only transportation. Okay. Yes. Okay. And I have some some the current fee schedule that we collect at. I'd be happy to share that with you. And then we have a comparison for some other surrounding counties. I'd be happy to share that as well. Please do. Okay. Yes. And are we working the plus or the negative with our transportation impact fees right now? Plus or the negative. Like, are we able with what we're collecting right now, 50%? We're, we're greatly in the negative. According to the study, we're so $240 we're in million dollars in the negative. Okay. And that, and do you have that here? Uh, that would be table two. The plan oh, there, okay, yes, okay. So we have the unfunded revenue needs of $246 million. Okay, so wow. That'd be a negative. <laughs> that'd be a negative. <laughs> So, so just uh, taking the example of single-family homes, uh, the, the current impact fee is, is $6,017. $1,932 of that is transportation. So just in general terms, the impact fee for a single-family home would go from six to 8000 if we were to go one, to 100%. Now, where you really are going to see some opportunity is for commercial and industrial growth, you're, you're, they charged it based on a thousand square feet. So, if a big box developer were to come in, for example, which, uh, they are. which they're coming rapidly, um, per thousand square feet, our current charge would be one thousand one hundred and sixty dollars for transportation. So, if you look at a hundred thousand square foot big box times uh, you know a thousand one hundred and sixty, and then you could potentially double. Doesn't you know, I'm not very good at math, but one million. Yeah, 16, yeah, we're, we're we're losing a lot of money. Very good, Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am, Commissioner Finnegan. Um, I just want to be clear um, with the process because I forgot there was another workshop scheduled at the next board meeting. Yes, and then we have something at potentially five fifteen. Ha ha. Yes. yes. Um, I'm for this. I think we need the money. I like it. Are we not, so we're not voting tonight because we have to have that second Correct. workshop, so, I guess, just to, okay. So we're workshopping what we're talking about. We're going to say it all back over again tonight. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So state statute requires two of each, two workshops, two public hearings. So okay. um, anticipating that the laws were going to change to July 1, we packed them into June. I love uh, it. Yes. I think we need it. I think we need it for our roads. I'm going to go ahead and tell you I'm all aboard, and hopefully there'll be consensus. Just from the feedback I've received from the community, you know, the, it, it points to new development paying their fair share versus putting the tax burden on the current residents to, to cover the gap. Yeah. And I, I don't think that this is going to slow development. I mean, do you? I, I don't. I don't think this is going to put a hiccup in anything. I think people are coming here in droves. And it could always be assessed years down the road if a different board decides that, hey, nobody's coming here and we need them to, they can make a different decision. My experience is those large commercial developments don't bat an eye. They just want to know how much to make the checkout for. They make that in a day. That's, you know, people get afraid of if we do this, people won't comment. They're thinking long term investment and the money that they're going to make. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Bays, Commissioner oh, I, I love talking Davis. About this. Yes. Of course, I love this. Um, you know, for me, uh, every day when you pick up the paper or we have citizens that come, they talk about, you know, closing the door. We're not closing the door, nor can we close the door. But what this does provide an opportunity to do is kind of slow the roll somewhat. Um, and if people do come, um, we're getting, I think, good quality developments um, by having these increases. And I think this goes a long way in the steps that we took towards not accepting new residential roads. Um, 
and then having the new growth and development sort of pay for itself. So I am all in favor of this. Me too. Commissioner Kennard. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Davis. Um, yeah, I'm absolutely in favor of it. In fact, I actually was promoting larger than 50% in 21, but um, that was not really the temperature of the board at the time. So didn't go anywhere, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a, you and I had to vote with. <laughs> I, I actually, I, I, I bravely put something out there higher than 50, but some wanted rollback, so. Well. Um, we were lucky to get 50. <laughs> good try. Keep it up. Um, anything else, Commissioner Bernard? We need to get to 100%. I'm glad you're on board with this. Like yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any, can I open it up to public comment? Do I need to, no public comment? Wait, where am I? Open to public comment. Would anyone from the public like to speak? Can we I go be public? <laughs> yes. Tito? Tito? Thumbs up. Okay. Seeing none, um, I'm going to close public comment. Thank you for this. Thank you. Thank you, board, for being a great board. Uh, our upcoming meeting is at 1 o'clock, and I'm going to adjourn this meeting. Thank you. <laughs>